Thank you very much. Thank you to the uh, Innovation uh, Roundtable team for inviting me. Thank you to Olivera for uh, uh, setting this up. Um, I know I have a short time frame until uh, 3.25, so about uh, uh, less than 20 minutes. So uh, I decided to, to concentrate on a few learnings uh, uh, that I've learned um, while I was uh, um, managing uh, business creation uh, initiative at Orange. But first of all, uh, let me introduce who I am. Uh, I'm Nicholas Bry. Uh, I work in the uh, innovation division at Orange. And uh, what I do is uh, I design innovation program that helps uh, departments, business units, uh, collaborators, uh, affiliates at, at Orange that help them to innovate. So uh, sharing with them the right tools, uh, appropriate organization to uh, uh, boost their innovation. That's why my title is uh, Innovation Booster. And I, can, I would say that uh, my, uh, my uh, position is to design places where good innovation thrives. Um, I wrote a book about innovation. It's called The Entrepreneur Factory, and, and this is one of the initiatives I want to mention during the talk. Uh, so in the agenda, we have uh, three learning coming out from three business creation initiatives, one on open innovation, uh, one on entrepreneurship, empowering collaborators to uh, developing uh, innovation project. And one about the initiative I'm currently uh, managing uh, um, with Orange in Africa, uh, uh, tying up or linking local with uh, global innovation. And I will conclude uh, um, incorporating these three learnings uh, into a framework that is uh, uh, designed to help uh, shape the right innovation organization. Uh, mixing uh, organization and process uh, item with cultural item. So let's jump in into the first uh, uh, new business creation uh, initiative. Uh, it's about uh, uh, innovation, open innovation. And uh, as we say, uh, uh, as we like to say, innovation is like a parachute. It works better when it's open. So. We are a great believer at Orange uh, uh, of open innovation uh, uh, project. Um, we've uh, uh, completed several initiatives uh, from learning expedition, uh, sharing ideas uh, with internet users through the Imagine with Orange program, uh, sharing uh, project, uh, uh, innovative uh, uh, project with uh, developers through Hackathon, and our Orange Developers website, um, cooperating with startup uh, with our Orange Fab uh, um, network of accelerators. Uh, we have almost 20 uh, um, Orange Fab around the world, and also investing in startup through our Orange Venture uh, corporate funding uh, organization. So through this uh, diverse uh, initiative, uh, there is one lesson uh, I want to uh, point out, um, is that uh, um, open innovation is based on trust because uh, it involves sharing knowledge that you have to make explicit. Sometimes the knowledge is implicit, you have to make it explicit and share it. So you, you rely on trust with your partner. So to build this trust, check that's my first advice and my first learning. Check which common goals you have with your partners. So it's a very simple exercise. Uh, uh, you take a, a piece of paper, you write down your goals, you ask your startup partners to write down their goals, and you see if there are some intersection, uh, if there are some common goals, uh, that's the way to start a fruitful relationship. If there aren't, maybe that was not such a good idea to start a collaboration. Then I move to entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship is about empowering employees on innovation. Um, 
asking them for innovative ideas and uh, in some uh, uh, entrepreneurship project, if the employees are selected, uh, they become in charge of uh, developing the project for the corporation. So they go into what we call incubation and acceleration of the project until a, a product is developed and brought to market. So uh, I wrote a book about uh, uh, this entrepreneurship program in 10 steps. Um, let me display the 10 step uh, right away. <laughs> Uh, that's it. Uh, so it's called the Entrepreneur Factory, and, and basically uh, uh, it's crossing the experience of 40 different uh, corporations in Europe, France, uh, Spain, uh, Germany, uh, England, uh, which have committed into this entrepreneurship program. So the 10 steps are uh, advice is uh, for an innovation manager, um, was uh, was in charge of developing an innovation program or an entrepreneurship program. So it's the first step, uh, uh, ask him to address the reason why or the purpose of the program, uh, the value proposition for the collaborators, the sponsorship uh, of the program, um, the process, uh, and so on and so on. So I, I won't go into uh, the 10 step details. Um, but one uh, or two, two steps are particularly uh, delicate to manage, uh, and it's about uh, the sponsorship and the business involvement. So my learning on this kind of program is involve upstream sponsor and business into this program uh, to secure the landing of your project. Uh, why is it delicate? Because uh, sometimes you can get a high level sponsor at the beginning of the innovation program with high visibility and it makes a terrific inauguration speech. But then over time, is not really available on the program. And so uh, sometimes you need to complement him with a deputy sponsor who will be able to uh, um, have a meeting on the program to see how to improve the program uh, maybe once a month. Or you can set up uh, as a sponsor an innovation uh, uh, community or an innovation committee uh, that will be the sponsor for the program. And this in this com committee, there will be representative from the different businesses uh, of the company. Um, uh, also very important in the involvement of the business unit uh, from the very start of the program. Why from the very start? Because uh, at this time of the program, when you try to create new business, uh, um, and when you meet with the business unit that will later on work on, on boosting your business, uh, bringing your business into the distribution channels, uh, bringing your business toward their customers, so at, at the very beginning of the program, you are still uh, open to what the business unit might say about your new uh, uh, ID, about your new business ID. Uh, while if uh, uh, you meet them six months after uh, having developed uh, already a, a significant uh, product, some features and so on, uh, you are much less open to uh, listen to uh, uh, objections and, and, and criticism and so on. So it's very important to meet them very early and also to identify what uh, the, pro the problem, uh, to identify which problem for the business you need, your new business is solving. So your new business has value for the consumers, for the uh, for the customers of the company, but try to figure out how this new business will help the current business unit, uh, maybe to improve its market share, maybe to differentiate, maybe to uh, uh, build a loyalty program uh, with their customers, um, or maybe to, to uh, uh, have a different impact on, on their market. So find out the problem that your new business is creating so uh, this way you will secure a strong business unit commitment and uh, if you have this business unit commitment you can uh, uh, secure uh, your landing of the project 
uh, when it's ready to go to market and this way leverage the asset of the corporation. Uh, third example is uh, um, about what I'm currently doing uh, with Orange uh, in Africa. We have started a local innovation program uh, to bring agility and relevance to uh, our innovation uh, in Africa. We are present in 20 countries in Africa. And the idea behind this local innovation program is to stick to local specificities. Um, they say Africa is not a country. Uh, actually, it has 54 countries. So there are some specificities uh, uh, linked to these different countries. So we want to stick uh, with this uh, uh, specific customer expectation, user expectation, local competition, how to differentiate from the local competition. And we want also to execute quickly not to uh, not bringing the ID uh, back to the centralized uh, uh, innovation division, which is based in Europe, but being able to develop uh, as much as possible the innovation ID locally, and so to execute it more quickly. So to build this uh, local innovation program, we rely on different uh, pieces. One is uh, connecting with the innovation ecosystem locally. Uh, local companies, startup, university, state organization. It's, it's part of an open innovation uh, approach. Uh, second is involving the business unit and the employees. It it's, uh, resonates with what I've just said with the entrepreneurship program. Involving the business unit and the employees of the affiliate, uh, of the orange affiliate, of the local orange operator. Uh, in the ideation process uh, and then uh, uh, going uh, toward the, the end user to, to test the IDs. Um, third uh, piece is uh, the process that we rely on. It's really based on lean innovation, but I would say a simplified uh, lean innovation process. Um, uh, the first step is uh, to collect the IDs from the business unit and from the employees and to tweak the ID so that they are user-centric design. Uh, that is to say, mm, move from your uh, ID to a value proposition for the consumer and highlight the benefit for the consumer. And then second step, uh, once the ID is uh, uh, well formulated in a value proposition, um, we, um, we train our, our innovation manager locally and, and, and the employees to be able to um, design a mock-up uh, to materialize, uh, to uh, visualize the ideas through a very simple customer journey on, on mobile screens. So they design one, two, three, four, five screen uh, uh, showing um, what and then user would have to do if he, if this service was live. And so with this uh, mock-up, and also we do a business model canvas, uh, the second step is to go uh, to the target user and to see uh, how the target user uh, values the value proposition, if it's well received, uh, how they can uh, immerse themselves into the uh, five-screen customer journey on mobile, and this way, uh, we iterate in short cycles. And we, uh, at a certain point, if there are enough positive insight, uh, we hand over to a business unit. We will uh, bring the project to market. But this was not enough to uh, have this uh, local innovation process up and running in the different countries. So we built also innovation talk every week, every Wednesday, actually, tomorrow. We have a one-hour talk where we invite uh, external speakers who are doing innovation business in Africa, startup, investors, incubators, and they come and speak for one hour to our innovation community. So um, the process uh, uh, alone, uh, uh, it was like a factory without the raw material. So we needed the culture to really fuel uh, the process with uh, inspiration. And so uh, um, uh, one learning on this uh, uh, local innovation program is that uh, it, really, uh, um, it really scales 
when we can articulate this local initiative with some global platform. And the way to do that in our digital world is quite simple. Uh, we have to design not product, but we have to design platform with API connectors that facilitate this local and global tie-in. And this is exactly what we have done with uh, one uh, uh, super success of Orange in, in Africa, which is called Orange Money. We have developed a, a global platform for 20 countries. And each country can uh, use this platform locally, of course. And they can add uh, specific features on this Orange Money platform, uh, financial platform. Um, and if the uh, specific feature in Congo or in Ivory Coast is relevant, uh, other teams from Egypt or Tunisia can pick up these features and replicate it uh, uh, for their local market. So that's the way. Um, that's an example of what I uh, I'm thinking of when I speak about platform and API. Last slide. Um, I talked about it uh, a little bit. It's a way that innovation organization uh, um, really thrives uh, along with culture. So on the organization and process side, I have mentioned the test and learn uh, approach that we use. I have mentioned uh, the way that we build collaborative platform uh, to let uh, uh, other create value on top of our platform internally and sometimes externally. And for this, we use API. Um, I did not mention yet uh, the way that we uh, scale project, uh, um, but uh, it's important to notice that uh, once we have reached a first product market fit, that is to say when your new business is, uh, um, is uh, uh, seducing, is attracting a few customers, then you need to prepare to scale and, and to move from uh, 50 or 100 uh, corporate customers or, or maybe uh, 1,000 consumers to uh, 1 million cons consumers. And obviously, uh, uh, you need to review your organization to do that, uh, your innovation project organization to do that. On the other hand, on the other hand uh, uh, what is culture? What I mean by culture? First is to empower the employees and the business unit with what I call creative tension, boost their creativity, but with some guidelines and time frame. This is what I call the tension. And all in all, it's I call it creative tension. So it's a little bit like autonomy with constraint. Um, at Google, they say innovation loves constraint. Um, Second, uh, and we find back the sponsorship and the business unit commitments I mentioned, cross uh, this uh, bottom-up uh, uh, initiative uh, with a top-down uh, aspiration. So you, you have to have this uh, culture of innovation also um, be adopted uh, by uh, the C-level management and by the business unit manager, if you want to uh, make the link between the bottom-up initiative and, and their business. Uh, and last uh, um, element is uh, uh, boldness, or in other words, learning about your setback or learning about your failures. So uh, if you want to develop a risk-taking culture, uh, people must feel that uh, uh, it's okay if the project does not go uh, down to the end, if it is stopped at some time, uh, that we can learn from something. And for this, I have a, a design, and that will be my, my last uh, comment, because I see we are, we are um, at, uh, at, at, the, at the end of the presentation. For this, we have designed a specific innovation uh, workshop for executive. Uh, executive don't have much time, so it's a half a day workshop, two or three hours, and we put the our executive from the uh, executive committee of the different uh, affiliates in the shoes of an innovation team. So they pick up an idea, they start developing it, and then uh, it's constructed a, a little bit as a game. They pick up a card which says, "Okay, your idea is great, but uh, your consumer or your target consumer." They don't like it. What are you going to do? 
or okay, your idea is great, but you've lost your sponsor uh, is uh, going out of the company. What are you going to do? So during this game, uh, they pick up uh, three or, or four cards of obstacles to innovation. And this way, they feel uh, uh, what it is to have a setback on an innovation project, what it is to fail on an innovation project during the, the time of the project. So you can find more about this uh, uh, scaling up your innovation organization uh, on, a, on a post on my blog. And I, and I have designed a short tool that lets you assess uh, the level of your innovation organization and give you some advice. It's, so it's a self-assessment tool. Uh, and uh, you will find it uh, on this blog, rapidinnovation.fr. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, your attention and looking forward to the, the panel. You can don't hesitate to contact me on LinkedIn if you want to have a, a, an additional discussion about that. Thank you.